Open the database named Session 3. Under the Create tab, click Table Design, set ID as the primary key, and as an auto number. Format Salesman as short text and use the lookup wizard. Look up data from the Sales Name field of the Salespeople table, selecting only Sales Name for the lookup column, and sorting items in the list by Sales Name in ascending order. Click Next. Use Salesman as the label for the lookup field. It will ask you to save your table and save it as Sales. Format product as short text and use the lookup wizard to look up data from the product name field of the products table, selecting only product name for the lookup column, and sorting items in the list by product name in ascending order. Click Next. Use product as the label for the lookup field. Click Finish. Save your table. Number sold should be a number. You can use the shortcut key F6 to jump down to the table properties. Format is double, standard, and zero decimals. The total sales field should be a number, double, standard, and two decimals. Save your table. Switch to data sheet view and enter the data from the test instructions. Use the pull down menus for salesman and product. Save and close your table once you are finished. The database should have automatically created relationships between fields, but to double check, go to Database Tools and click on Relationships. I will delete mine to show how to create a relationship. There should be a relationship between product name of the products table and product of the sales table. Simply click and drag the field on top of the other. Click Create. There should also be a relationship between sales name of the salespeople table and salesman of the sales table. Save and close your relationships. In Design View, create an update query using all three tables. Click Update to make this an update query. This will update fields in our table and it cannot be undone. Update the Product ID field in the Products table by using a left function. You can type directly in the Update To space or you can use the Expression Builder. You can right click Select it from the Design tab, or use the shortcut key Control F2. From the built in functions, find the left function, or you can type it in the space. We want to select the left two characters of the product name field. You can type in the field using square brackets or select it from the table. The length parameter should be 2. Use a concatenation operator, which is a plus sign or an ampersand, to concatenate the length of the product name. Use a concatenation operator, 
fall by the length formula with the product name field as the parameter. Your formula should have the following appearance. You can run the query to double check your work. You can view the updated fields in Datasheet View, or you can also open the Products table. Switch back to Design View. Update the Years Employed field of the Salespeople table. Use the Date Diff function. and type in years as the interval parameter. Be sure to use quotes to format as text. For the date 1 parameter, insert the start date field. You can type it in using square brackets, or you can select it from the table. For date 2 parameter, use December 31, 2019. Make sure to use pound signs to format as a date. Delete the extra parameters. Click OK once you are finished. You can run the query again to view the updated field in Datasheet View. You can also view it in the Salespeople table. Go back to Design View. Update total sales from the Sales table. This time, try typing directly in the Update To space. Multiply number sold. times sales price. Run the query one last time and save it as update query. If you are adding fields together, running a query more than once will cause your calculation to compute more than once, resulting in incorrect numbers. To avoid having to reset a field back to zero for the purpose of rerunning the query a second time, you can simply copy and paste the table. This way, the copied table is unaffected by calculations, and if you make a mistake, you can simply use the untouched table instead of wasting time setting values back to zero in the updated table. The following exercise will serve as an example. In this example, we will have to reset all product total fields to zero to rerun the query. Let's copy and paste the products table to save us time later on. Close all tables and queries before we get started. Click to copy the products table and paste it in the task pane. Name it Copy of Products. Create another update query using the products and sales tables. Make sure to click Update. Update the product total. In the space, add the product total to the total sales field. Run the query only one time and save it as Update Query Products. If you have to rerun the query, you must reset all product total fields to zero before rerunning. 
If you run it again without setting product totals back to zero, the field will be calculated twice. Let's see what happens if you rerun without setting the values to zero. As you can see, product total and total sales were added twice. We would then have to reset the product total to zero and run the query again. Now the values are correct. You can see where this would be time consuming if you're dealing with many records. Let's run it again to see how the copy table would help us instead of setting values back to zero. You can see that the product total was added too many times. Instead of setting them back to zero, we can simply close the table and use the copy table in the query. You must add the table to the query, and then change the table name in which the field is updating. Simply delete the products table and be sure to create a relationship between the sales table and the newly added table. There should be a relationship between product name and product of the sales table. Run the query. and you can see the fields are correct. This can save you some time if you make a mistake. To avoid confusion, you can either delete your products table and rename the copy, or just make sure to use the copy table for any future calculations or reports. Another option is to create a make table. Under the create tab, create a query in design view. Select the products table. Select make table. And choose the products table. Select all fields using the asterisks. Run the query and you can see that is basically a copy of the table. The downfall of using a make table is that it does not keep your table properties. Close all tables and queries. Create another update query with all three tables. Click update to make this an update query. Update the quarter sales by adding quarter sales field to the total sales. Run the query only one time and save it as update query salespeople. As in the query before, if you must rerun the query, reset all product total fields to zero before rerunning. From the Create tab, create a report using the Report Wizard with 1-inch margins. Select the following fields from the Salespeople table. Sales Name, Years Employed, and Quarter Sales. Select the following fields from the Products table. Product ID, Unit Price, Sales Price, and Product Total. Select the following fields from the Sales table. Number Sold, and Total Sales. View by Salespeople. Click Next. And sort by Product ID in ascending order. Calculate the sum for Total Sales. Use Stepped Layout and Landscape Orientation. 
use the following title. First quarter sales. Here is a good place to double check that your margins are at 1 inch. In layout view, correct any truncated fields. You can use your arrow keys to move columns. You can also make them smaller. Switch to Design View and insert the following header top aligned with the margin and right aligned on the right margin. You can draw the header in the correct position or you can use your arrow keys to locate it in the right corner. You can also right align with other fields and top align with the header. Don't forget to right align the text. To center the title, click and drag to place directly on top of the right edge of the header. Click Center. In the group footer, add a text box under the Number Sold column. Delete the label portion. In the Unbound box, calculate the sum of the Number Sold field. Type directly in the space with an equal sign. Under Properties, you can open the Expression Builder to better view the calculation. Calculate the sum of the Number Sold field. Click on the box and under Properties, format the field as standard with no decimals. Copy the field and paste it into the report footer. Make summary fields in the group footer and report footer the same size as their respective field in the detail line and vertically align. To do this, use the control key to select all fields, right click, and select to widest. Do the same thing to align right. You can use the arrow keys to move the column in a better position. Click the sum for number sold in the group footer and top align with the other sum values. Center all column headings, detail data, and sum values vertically in their respective columns. Use the control key to highlight the rows and click Center. You may have to click more than once for them to officially center. Make all fields in each column the same size in their respective columns.
Highlight everything in the report header, page header, and report footer in format to be in black, boldface type. You can use Control B to bold. Use Control A to highlight everything and format as black type. Switch between views to finalize any formatting. Once you are satisfied with the report, view the printout and print preview. Your report should have the following appearance. Close Print Preview. Open the Products table and under the External Data, export to Excel with formatting and layout. And open the destination file when the export is complete. Once you are in Excel, select cells A1 through A4 and cells D1 through E4. And under the Insert tab, Create a 2D column chart. Use the following title centered above the chart. Product Analysis. Be sure to bold. Set Sales Price as the secondary axis. To do this, Click on Change Chart Type and select Combo. Select Sales Price as the secondary axis and format as a line. Format Product Total as Clustered Columns. Click OK. Format the Y axes with intervals as shown and as numbers with commas and no decimals. Click on the Y axis for the product total and format axis. Set the major units to be 4000. Under number, format as a number with commas and no decimals. Under change colors, Select to use monochrome colors of shades of gray and black. Show the legend below the chart. Format the x-axis with a black line. Click on the x-axis labels and under the paint bucket, select solid line and choose black. Click on the inside of the plot area and add a black line. Click on the chart and do the same thing to format a black border around the chart area. Save the spreadsheet and copy the chart to be used in the document. Open the document named Session 3 Doc, which is a simplified block letter. A simplified block letter should have 1 and 3 quarter inch top margin for a window envelope and a 2 inch top margin for a conventional envelope. Add the following header one inch from the top of the page and write justified on the right margin, replacing the nines with your name. Double click inside the header and in the right corner, type in the header. You can double click on the right side or you can click insert alignment tab and choose right. Make sure to set it at 1 inch from the top. Close the header. Select recipients to merge from the database created in Part 1. Select the Salespeople table. Edit recipients to include only the recipients whose quarter sales are greater than 10,000. Under Mailings, click Edit Recipient List. Click Filter. Select Quarter Sales under Field. Under Comparison, select Greater Than. Under Compare To, type in 10,000. Click OK. You should see only the two records that match the criteria. 
Click Sort and sort the data by quarter sales in ascending order. Click OK. Under the Layout tab, click to add a continuous section break after the second paragraph. A section break allows you to format a certain section of a page without affecting any formatting or other parts of the page. Under the Home tab, click on the paragraph markers to better view the spacing. Click on Paragraph and click Tabs. Clear all tabs and set a left tab at 1 inch and a left tab at 3 inch. Click OK. Click Enter so there is one blank line between paragraph 1 and the fields. Enter a tab followed by the merge field for sales name. Under Mailings, click Insert Merge Field. Enter a tab and insert the quarter sales field. Under Rules, click Next Record. Use a format switch to format quarter sales as currency with commas and zero decimals. Use the keystroke Alt F9 to view the merge codes. Click inside quarter sales and type in the following format switch. It may be helpful to keep a file of format switches on hand to use as a reference. Use Alt F9 to exit the merge codes. You can preview the results to make sure you have formatted it correctly. Click Enter and then enter a tab. Simply copy and paste. This will ensure that your quarter sales format switch applies to the next record. Add another continuous section break. Make sure there is one blank line between the merged data and the second paragraph. Insert the chart that was created in Excel, top aligned with the second paragraph, and right aligned on the right margin. Right click to choose Wrap Text and select Square. Under Mailings, click Finish and Merge to a new document. Edit individual documents and select All. Make sure everything on the chart is readable, including the y-axis intervals. Your document should have the following appearance. Save it as Session 3 Doc Merged. We have now finished the test. Be sure to check out the UIL website under the Computer Applications Contest page for more videos, including one on how to grade. Thanks for watching this video, and good luck in your future contests.